you know, hopefully, thank you, Carlos. Thank you for that. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully folks jump on, you know, as we kind of go, but we do have to move some of this stuff along, uh, considering how long we've kind of, we've been waiting to move some of this stuff along. So uh, first off, we are, <clears throat> for folks who have not attended our meetings in the past, if this is your first time or, you know, you're attending again, please put your name in the chat for attendance purposes. Um, so that way Carlos can make sure that, you know, your, your, your attendance is reflected. Um, we ask that you mute, uh, we don't typically take questions from folks who are present. Um, so if you're not a commissioner, then we will not call on you. Um, thank you for, thank you everybody for coming to the second meeting, the second PAC meeting of this month. Uh, let's start right away with approving the minutes from the last two, from the, from Carlos, it's one or two. I saw two attached. It's from the last two meetings. The last yeah. two. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are approving minutes from the last two. Carlos sent them to you guys on a, in an email on Friday. Do we have a first to approve? Do we have any edits that need to be made to the to the minutes? Hearing none. Do we have do we have a first to approve the minutes? No approved. Do we have a second? Seconded. Seconded. Carlos, minutes are approved. Minutes for both meetings are approved. Okay. Now the nitty gritty stuff, the actual, the actual stuff. Um, I am going to pass this to Nadia so Nadia can start this conversation um, and we can move this part of our agenda along as well. So Nadia, you're up. Okay, so I know we were, um, we're gonna have to have the conversation with uh, Robin present, um, but I know everyone received um, the, the PAC traffic information request that, um, Robin put together. So we just wanted to hear from every, uh, from folks um, your feedback, um, where are you at? Um, obviously, let's try to limit ourselves. We don't want to prolong this meeting or have it to be super long. Um, but if you all want to share your, your perspectives, this would be the, the perfect time to do so. So I'm going to open up the floor and see if anybody wants to jump in. Hi, this is Caroline. I, I wasn't sure quite what to make of it, honestly. Um, um, I know we're going to be hearing from the chief and, and hopefully, and this will be, you know, he'll be able to respond to questions, but I, I, I just wasn't sure what the point of the document was. Is it meant to be shared? Is it meant to be sent back to, I, I was so just, if you could clarify that for me, cause I wasn't quite sure what I should say about it because I didn't know what the purpose of it was. So Caroline, if I may, so uh, hold on one second, hold on. Sorry about that. And since I wasn't there, there we go. No, it's okay. So, so the, so if you guys remember, we had sent Chief Jones a list of questions uh, pertaining to specific, to traffic stop information, um, and then Chief Jones responded to us, uh, and it's, he responded to us, and then there were the the the. The two options at that point were to accept the answers or to ask for further clarification. And so Robin's doc, Robin's document that he shared with everybody is is the impetus for us having Chief Jones come and debrief us on the information that was provided with the answers that he gave and further questions that came up from 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 the answers. Uh, does that make sense? Right. And Go, uh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I just say I, I'm sort of not. I, I you know, I, I, um, I guess I, I believe we should have follow up questions for him. Are we meant to then send these to him before he comes and speaks to us? Or, yeah. or is that in reserve? Okay, so we're supposed to be editing them um, um, for a document that we would send back to the chief so right. that he so could that, be prepared. So okay. So that way, when Chief Jones comes and meets with us during the first meeting in September, one, he already knows the, the questions that we're, that we're going to ask him. Um, so it's one to allow him to prepare some, some answers on it. Um, and it, it just, it, it allows us to, to, it allows us to look at the information that was provided already to see where there could be gaps in the information that was provided to us by Chief Jones. I hope that clarifies. Um, I've, I've read, I read um, a good portion of it. And um, to me, it was reflective of where we've been headed. And, and pretty much we've, we're, we seem to concur, at least the hiring and discipline committee, um, on a number of the points that were raised in it. Uh, length, 
perhaps it could be condensed to be a little bit um, shorter and tighter because we might have a better chance of getting a really thorough response <laughs> if it's not a long uh, dissertation on, uh, on the data that we have with traffic enforcement. That's that's uh, very fair, and I think it is. Uh, what well, that was one of my points as well. Just making it a little concise, a little smaller. Um, do folks have any other input um, in terms of the document and the content of the document itself, um, or what? Um, yeah, I, this, sorry, this is Caroline. I mean, I talk all the time, especially since I have to get off soon. But um, I agree completely with Alicia um, and with you, Nadia. Um, I think it. Um, I think it definitely needs to get to the point. Um, I also, I guess what I would suggest is I think we may get a better response if the tone is a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. um, I think it should just be much more matter of fact follow up mm -hmm. um, and less a kind of argument argumentative yeah. um, for lawyers like Alicia, you know what I'm talking <laughs> about, right? It should, I mean, it's, it's, we want really this to be a good dialogue. So I would, mm -hmm. guess I would, I would uh, second what Alicia was saying about making it short making it to the point. And then I would also say, let's just, I think it should be very matter of fact, follow-up yeah. questions and not kind of um, a, an argumentative um, tone issue. Yeah. Um, so. Right, because the idea is that <clears throat> they already have this, they already know these things. Yeah, right. So it's, it doesn't make sense for us to repeat them. It just has to say, you know X, then what is Y, yeah. right? Okay, right. great. Um, any other input folks uh, that you may have in terms of this letter? So that way we can, you know, send it back. What I'm thinking is probably we're gonna uh, give the feedback back to uh, Robin um, and see if he's comfortable editing um, this draft. You know, taking away a couple of those things. And if so, then we can then review that. But um, I don't know what everybody else thinks if that would work. Can I? Can yeah, I, I think you should oh, send ahead, the. Sorry. sorry, excuse me. I think you should send the feedback to the whole committee, not just Robin. Right, right, right. No, but I mean, in terms of doing the doing the editing itself, since he drafted the. Um, I know, but but it, it wasn't anyway. I, I think that would be better. Right. No, obviously everyone, everyone, everyone okay. is was part of the conversation. We're not no, taking it. I, no, I don't mean I don't mean the whole pack. I mean, I mean, no, the back the whole subcommittee. Oh, oh, who okay. we sent it to initially. I yeah, because this, yes. this, this did come. This did come from the subcommittee. It came from the did, subcommittee. Yeah, Robin's right. just the one who sent it. Right. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so I guess two things to so so we have two we have two things that we need to pursue. OK, because one, I think we sent we sent a list of questions. We got answers back. Right. So we sent a list of questions, we got answers back. That's what necessitated, and Ms. Branson, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that's what necessitated this document, right, was the answers that were received uh, led to this further dialogue from your subcommittee. Am I correct in saying that, that uh, the, the dialogue that's expressed in this document? Um, partially, the yep. answers received as well as um, conversations uh, we had, um, there, was, um, and, and I think this accounts for some of the, I guess what you would could consider the tone um, is that, you know, we, I'm pretty good at asking direct questions, you know, um, and I know when we're not getting direct answers. So, you know, however you all, um, think the 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 follow-up should be crafted is fine with me but um but I, I i um i'm not optimistic about receiving direct answers because we didn't get them the first time and I think to Ms. Branson's point, I think that's a that's a point of that's a point of context that I think we should remember, right? Is that this wouldn't be our first request for this information. We asked for this a couple months ago, right? Um, and part of the reason why we're now coming together is because now we're going to ask Chief Jones to come and speak to us directly, not through email, not through you know back and forth right. correspondence. Oh, we're going to ask him to sit with us and meet with us, right? I don't think um, um, to Cherie's point. I don't think. Um, any of us who've spoken already are suggesting that it it um, not be direct. I think the point, it, I think what we're just suggesting is actually exactly. be very direct, 
right. but just much more concise. Right. Um, absolutely, yeah. we agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, as I said, I'm just not optimistic because um, I, I think we've been asking the same questions for well over six months now. Yes. Okay. So, so you know, we can ask them any way y'all want to ask them, but I think we're going to get the same answers. Yeah. Right. So what I believe, I'm also I believe trying to that, follow uh, the process. Go ahead, Mr. Rick. Go ahead, Mr. Rick. I, I believe that what Caroline was saying was that she didn't want a confrontational conversation but an informational conversation. And I agree with that. Um, but, you know, at some point, you know, I used to tell people, you know, <laughs> I, have, I have a long history of asking people questions and getting answers, okay? I did this for uh, many, many years. And, and, and what I know is this, that a response is not necessarily an answer, that we were getting responses right. that were not in fact answers right um we all witness that and we yes and so you know at some point um the gloves have to come off yes our people will continue to play games with you as i said we have not the, none of the questions um were indirect imprecise or um, could have not been addressed in a direct and succinct fashion, okay? So, like I said, we can do this any way y'all want. However, I am just trying to be exceedingly clear that, you know, what's the definition of insanity? You keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Um, so, I ain't crazy, at least on most days. So, so, so I just want to be very, I, I want people to understand that's the context. Yeah. But like yeah. I said, we can do this anyway, y'all want. No, and I think, I will say, I think that Shabab, I, I see, I, I see that you're unmuted, so I'll go to you in a, in a second. But I think, I think that's the crux of this, right? Like we, these aren't new questions. These are not surprises, right? The, the difference, the difference is going to be our, our shift now, right? It's, it's Chief Jones sitting with us and, and having this conversation with us. Now we've all, we, we've all kind of asked for different varying, varying degrees of information over the last year and some change, right? And to Ms. Branson's point, I think that we have gotten varying degrees of answers, <laughs> varying degrees of answers. Um, with that said, I think that this is a conversation that we need to have before we move forward with, with this public hearing that we're gonna have, right? Because at the very least, if we again get responses that aren't answers, we've done at least this part, right? Then we gotta hear from the community, right? But we've done at least this part. Um, and these are questions that Chief Jones knows that they're coming. They're, it's not questions that we've hid. It's not questions that we've like, you know, we haven't twisted any words in these questions. These are questions that, I mean, to Ms. Branson's point, we sent the first email relating to traffic stops in February. It's been six, it's been six months. It's been it's six, six months. months. So, so this notion that like, I, I hear like, we, we, we need we need some answers now <laughs> we need some answers hey, now. you know I, can i just suggest um, yeah, i think yeah. we all agree i think I, I wouldn't disagree with anything that sheree just said um i guess my only point and and maybe this is what alicia was getting at too is that i think the less the more um stuff there is in there the more i think that more actually gives them more opportunity to avoid answering whereas i think if the questions are very like just the question it's much harder, I think, to dance around it than putting a lot of extra context in. That's all my, that's my yeah. only point. Um, Just really, really quick, um, Shabab, I know you wanted to add something to the conversation. Hi, so sorry about that. Um, uh, I was just going to say a while ago that um, I'm, I'm glad this is happening because I know that um, follow-up can sometimes fall through the cracks, um, specifically the question around how officers are evaluated uh, reminds me of when we had the Q&A with um, the chief and uh, um, and Kate. And one of the one of the things the chief shared at the time was that they're um, revamping the criteria by which officers are um, evaluated. And um, I know that one of the follow ups that we had at the time, and it might have been in fact that Ms. Branson who brought it up, is what's the timeline for that um, a new evaluation process, and when will we get information on that? 
So I think, you know, the sooner we can get this out and the more we can ensure that, you know, as we get each piece, we're sending the follow-up, uh, the better. Um, and agree with all the comments that have uh, been made previously. Yeah, thank you so much, about One of the things that I wanted to make clear is that uh, there has to be some form of escalation, um, as I think Ms. Branson was saying, because it, it um, we're going to get the same answers. It's gonna be the same over and over again. Um, no one is saying to take an aggressive tone or accusatory tone, because I've heard that word a lot in this space for some reason, um, but I heard this a long, long time ago, is the shoe wasn't for you, but if the shoe fits, lace it up and wear it. So if people are feeling like it's being directed that way, it's because there is something behind that, right? So we need to get this clear answers because it is the mirror of the same, of what we had uh, uh, before with the previous things that we did with the Higher and Discipline Subcommittee as well. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of running in circles. Um, and if it's gonna be, a uh, uh, them using our time for us to continue to run in circles and get more questions and ask them differently and maybe that's not going to be the case right we're following the protocol we're following up on hey you didn't really answer these questions so the next uh, step is we're going to have to define what that is and it's going to have to escalate it can't stay in the same place so i absolutely agree um, with everyone i don't know if anyone else has anything else to add i, I just want to um to just a point of clarification um when we sent the letter, um, did we CC the council? The the letter that we sent a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Carlos, we did, right? Yes, uh, am I right I'm in saying that? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so I, I think part of our um, um, escalation, if you will, um, has to be to make things public. Um, because, you know, the, the, um, the residents of Montgomery County have, have a, a, a real interest in this work, um, and in the kinds of questions we're asking. So I think what we, we need to do is to, um, stop allowing this or, or to, to, this this right now is a dialogue between us and the the police. Okay, um, I think the other party that that deserves to be in this dialogue is the public, and so you know, um, I, I I think we need to give some serious uh, consideration mm -hmm. to doing like a press statement or something. It says, hey, look, you know, we've been asking these questions for six months. Here are the questions. Um, here are the responses. You know, we look forward to getting more information. Um, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be um, hostile. A press release is informational. Um, and, and maybe that will help to turn up the or increase the likelihood of our of our getting um answers that are that are truly responsive to our questions i think that, that makes a lot of sense I, I and i think that makes a lot of sense um i think that so we have two i think things to vote on right now so that way we know what our next steps are okay um, the first motion, and I, because I, I, and Ms. Branson, you, you must have been reading my mind because what you just said ties into what I was going to bring up during new business pertaining to the letter we sent two weeks ago. <laughs> so, um, but pertaining to this, so I'll stick with traffic stops for now, and then we'll circle back around. Um, it has been, uh, it has been six, it has been six months. I am proposing a motion for us to release a press statement by the end of the week, outlining the questions that we have been asking, releasing it on social media, and trying to turn some of this pressure up on MCPD to get answers, okay? Um, that is the first motion, and I think we should vote on that first before we move to the next part. So in- Second it, second oh, it. You. There we go, okay. okay so I, have a, I have a question. Mr. Ricks, go ahead. Uh, did we not, are we not supposed to meet with 
sheep in September? We are, but I'll, I'll be honest, I, I share the subcommittee's concerns that even meeting with him in September without us turning, on the, turning up the pressure in between then is gonna yield the same results. I think we're not going to get the information that we need. Well, I, I guess I'm questioning why turn up the heat before you had the opportunity to give him to respond. If then, if we've you given don't him, like so had, we've six given months. him two opportunities. They've had to. that opportunity a couple of times. I think, mm -hmm. I think the the issue comes with um, this is not the first time we're asking these questions. We've asked in different ways, and we've asked in different shapes and forms through subcommittees, individually, through community, through here, through there. Um, and I think you're absolutely right, Dalvin. I was just trying to kind of, for some reason, thinking to make it slower, but. I think you're right. Um, I think putting the pressure ahead of time will create the urgency to then get the answers by the time that we meet with them. Um, because at that point, you know, the public's welcome to come to these meetings. Uh, so if, they're, if the public is here when we're expecting those answers, I mean, you've seen the difference in reaction that we have from some folks when we have public here. That's just factual. So I think uh, that little pressure could really yield to, uh, to good results. Can I, have, can I ask a question? I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Carlos. So I'm confused about the six months uh, timeline. Um, mm -hmm. So from my perspective, I've seen this, this traffic stop information request that was done. I think MCPD responded to that one in like G uh, end of December, the mm -hmm. first part, section one. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the discretionary policing subcommittee, the second part, they sent it to us and Susan and I looked at it and we asked for some clarification from the discretionary policing subcommittee. I never received an answer. So I never sent it to MCPD because there were some things that we wanted, like we, we just wanted to know where you got, where Robin was getting some of his sources from. And we just wanted some clarification on definitions, right? Um, so did the discretionary policing subcommittee send a separate request or? Because I'm, I'm just confused with the timeline of we gave MCPD six months to respond and they never responded. Perhaps this was my fault. Maybe it was a miscommunication or something. But yeah. So so what you're saying is that, that you, you all never sent the letter forward? No, because I asked multiple times for clarification on the data request and I never received a response. So that's problematic um, because I, for one, was not under any impression that you and Susan were going to be the gatekeepers here. Okay, um, okay. I, I I think what the the last the last email I recall was uh, uh, an email that says something like, um, "Why don't you just send it and and let them let let the police ask if they got any questions." You know, I mean, that was, you know, what, and and maybe maybe that was the conversation that that uh, uh, Robin and um, God, his name is just Jerome Justice. I can't. I'm just totally blanking Justice. on his name. I mean, but anyway, um, that that was that was the conversation we had, um, and and I think that is that is really. Important important for us to clarify, you know, I, I personally don't see you and Susan as being the gatekeeper here, you know, right. and if you right. all are making decisions about, about what you're sending of, uh, of our work, that becomes really troubling for me. Okay. So, so why uh, didn't you all, so Sherry, why didn't the discretionary policing committee send that letter on their own then? Um, I don't know. I guess we, I, I think we had all believed that the letter had been sent. <laughs> we, I have no, I have no, um, um, recollection that we thought the letter was being held. So if I may, I think, I think this is the, I think this is the, com I think this is where the confusion and I guess the, the holdup happened. Carlos and Susan asked for clarification to make sure that they can get the information that folks were asking for, right? right. Uh, when they did not receive a response to those questions, it, was, it wasn't it was sent forward. 
Right. So I, so, so I, I don't, I don't know if it's so much because I, I hear what you're saying, Ms. Branson, but I don't know if it was so much a decision to, to not send. I, I think they were just trying to make sure that you guys got the information that you that that, that you were asking for, and I think that's why they asked. For, that's why they asked for clarification. It was more that. Um, and I know I, I will say I had a conversation with Robin, uh, where I did say to Robin, I said just respond to just I mean just respond to them so that way it could be sent forward I and I never heard anything else back from that so I sorry Dalvin this is Caroline again I now I'm totally confused because what are we looking at what are these responses to so and that's and that's I guess so when I saw this document I that's why I figured that they had responded because there's answers to these questions at the bottom right so so they must have responded to something, so I'm not, it's just, um, yeah, and I'm sorry, me. I do have to get off. Um, I, I just register that I'm for the press release idea, and um, I am for follow-up, um, but I, it, it's, I'm confused about what we're asking follow-up to then, if whatever this, what is this document that was with the additional information from the subcommittee? Well, I, I don't see that uh, we, uh, Carlos and Susan are gatekeepers. Uh, they are staff. And, and when they have information or they're trying to stir the uh, group with uh, the right information to, to make decisions and to have conversation, then I would respect that. Uh, but um, therefore, I, I think we need to table this motion uh, and go on and have the conversation with Chief on in September and move from there since there's, there seems to be ambiguous information. Here's my concern, that at no point was this subcommittee told, if you don't respond to, to our need for clarifications, we will not send your document forward. At no point did that occur. And so, because that did not occur, yes, there was gatekeeping here. Secondly, there, the, the, the problem is that some of the uncertainties that they expressed were, were um, should have been uncertainties expressed by the police so that we could further our dialogue with them, okay? So if there, if there are definitional issues, if there are whatever, the, then that's a conversation for this subcommittee to have with the police, not for us to have with, with Carlos and Susan. That's, that's not, I mean, I've, like you, Vernon, I've been on a lot of these, uh, I've been on a lot of these commissions and whatnot. And, 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 and the role of staff to me is really clear. And that role is to, to um, um, execute, the request of the commissioners. Um, so, so my so learning that that didn't happen is really disturbing to me. It's really disturbing, and and learning it now is is even more disturbing. So, so I think what we have to do now is probably you're right. We have to table this because we have no place to go forward. But. But, but what it says to me is that we have to have some clarification on a lot of different matters. Right, with all due respect, I'd love to, I'd love to respond. So the first part, you, you all did get a response directly from MCPD. That came like- Yeah, December Robin references. Right, right. So right. that's the section one, right? The second section, right? You sent, you sent it to us, we looked it over. I- try to reach out to the subcommittee at least three different times asking for clarification. I've, I've sent MCPD other data requests, information requests, and I've gotten responses of, we don't know what this means, can you please help us? So instead of doing it again, right? like you said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting different results. I instead, sent it back to you all for just clarification on data sources and definitions. I thought that would be simple enough to get. And so I held, I held it. I didn't send it forward. I'm sorry if you think that I was a gatekeeper. That was not my intention at all. I was just trying to get more information to facilitate a smoother process in MCPD responding. That's it. 
and and that and unless I would unless there was other communication after that, the last communication that I had with I, someone from your subcommittee, which would be Robin at that point, I guess, uh, was where uh, I said to Robin, I said, well, just respond to them so that way it could be sent forward. And then that was it. I didn't hear anything else after that. I and seeing the document, I saw answers at the bottom and I thought I was like, oh, I was like, I guess it did get sent forward. And I guess we did get some answers. So it seems like so now so we have so here's so I'm going to revoke my motion and I'm going to introduce another motion <laughs> to well, for, let me let me answer a question before you let, let him finish another. please he's the chairperson please go ahead Dalvin, well, I'm, I, mean, I, I'm, I might answer your question as I'm saying this Mr. Riggs um it uh, to for Carlos and Susan to send this request to MCPD by tomorrow right let's give MCPD how, how much time did we give Chief Patel to respond to the last one we had from Carlos? Do you remember? Give him five days. I think we gave him a week. A week. So we will give we will give them a week. Okay. We will give them a week. Carlos, when you receive the responses, you will then share them with the pack like you normally do. Um, I I it just sounds like there was just a mi a, a miscommunication. I think that's really what it was. I do not think that there was the intent to, to, to gatekeep. I, I know that Carlos and Susan and I had conversations and Nadia as well about the request. And we even talked about, okay, well, once we get the information, we'll make sure everybody gets it. So we, so I, th I think, I think a step got missed there. I think that's really what happened. Um, and now we know, now we can take care of that step. So then we can prepare for the next step, which is Chief Jones coming to, to speak to us about the information. Okay. Um, so my motion is going to be to have this information request released to MCPD by tomorrow, sent to MCPD by tomorrow, okay? And MCPD will have one week to respond to us, okay? At that point, at that point, we may have to reconvene for next steps because I do believe, and, and I, I think Ms. Branton is spot on in that, yes, they did respond to some of these questions in December, right? However, and this ties into some new business that I was going to bring up, there does seem to be a measure from MCPD of just not giving us as much information as we need, generally speaking, okay? So if in turn the answers are what I think a lot of us kind of expect them to be in this, in, in this thing, we should be prepared to put some public pressure on them because this is not the first thing we've asked for where the answers haven't necessarily been as clear as we would like them to be. Okay, Susan, I, your hand is up. I'm so sorry. I'm getting to you now after after ten minutes. I'm sorry. I will go to no, you. No, that's okay. I just I I just wanted to reiterate some of what Carlos said about trying to get the information over to MCPD. MCPD is not staffed appropriately to have dedicated staff that handles PAC requests. It goes through their system um, as basically like American Maryland Public Information Act request. They do try to prioritize you. Uh, there are two things that are going on over there, and that's part of what Carlos and I tried to help with, is that we were not sure what the data sources were, and there are multiple data sources across the state that people can access, and they don't match up. And so if they don't know what the foundational data is that you guys are using, it's going to be hard for them to accurately respond and give you the type of information you want. And the second thing is, is that their records management system was built in 1999. It does not capture every single thing that everybody is asking for, and they are trying to rectify this problem. It is going through a county procurement process that is taking too long, but I just want to put it out there that they will not always be able to get you all of the data that you're asking for, and it's not because they're trying to shroud it in secrecy. It's because they can't get it for you. And that's, and that's uh, fair. Thank you so much, Susan. Do I have and, uh, the opportunity to talk now? Oh, go ahead, Bernard. Uh, Mr. Rick said I didn't. I forgot that you were going. Go ahead. I, I agree with what Susan said because it was told to us, and, and I haven't seen Robin on the on the call for the last two or three weeks. So, and and I and and it was told to us that the two systems did not match up. And that uh, uh, you know, the, sometimes the data won't match up. So what I hear the, the conversation is, is that accusing them of lying to us. And, and I don't see that to be a lie. I'm starting to see whether or not the information uh, that Susan and Carlos was trying to put together would go to them with some 
uh, basic background information that it can be matched. And, and it is obvious that what Susan said, that it doesn't necessarily match. So that's why I'm saying if, we, if we're going to meet with Chief in September, that we do that and get and, and bring the questions up. Robin hasn't been on. He's the one who I understood was doing the setup for it. So I have, so I guess I have a question and Ms. Branson, I'll go to you and then Nadia. And Mr. Ricks, this, my question, this question is for you, but I think this, I, 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 I'll open it up. Um, if the data doesn't match, right? Then what difference is it going to be what Chief Jones tells us or not? What diff What would that do for us if he's oh if he's working off of faulty data? Then he's not going to give us information that is going to be relevant to what we're trying to do either. Here's what we know. Here's what we know right now. What we know is that the data, and this is across the board with MCPD, the data that they've shared with us comes from a faulty system. Okay, they have shared anecdotally that maybe it's less, or maybe it's not as high as we think. Right. <laughs> But they, how would they know that unless they've been keeping paper records for the last 30 years? And I can promise you that's not happening. That is not happening. There is absolutely no way that a police department that oversees a county this big is keeping paper records that Chief Jones can go in the back and pull them and say, yeah, we pulled over 37 African-Americans in Gaithersburg this week. There's, it's just not going to happen. So it's either we accept that the information is faulty and in Robin and to Robin and his subcommittee's defense, they've outlined that point, that part of the recommendation is you need to upgrade your faulty system then. Because if we can't rely on the data that you're giving us, then we, we're, we're, we're to, to, to quote my grandfather, we're swimming up Shit's Creek without a paddle. Like to quote my grandfather, we are not, it's just not happening. So I think we should invite Chief Jones, but I'm gonna be frank. I do not think the information he's going to provide to us is going to be something that I'm going to sit here and say, okay, I can hang my hat on that being a fact because he's working off of the same faulty information that's been given to us so far. Ms. Branson, I'll go to you and then I'll go to Nadia. Well, I didn't know where to start. Okay, so the, the problem with the data source um, inquiry in the letter, I assume could have been resolved with a footnote, right? That's, that's all you need for that. So um, the, 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 the greater issue is, is the, the issue of the, the, the data not matching um, because, and, and the data being insufficient because, you know, Montgomery County, like every place else, has to report information to the feds, right? I mean, so, and, and to the state. I mean, we just don't sit out here on this island, you know? So, um, so whatever, you know, and maybe that's, may, maybe that resolves the, the, the question. You know, the, the data we want is the data that you send to the state and the federal government. On, on this issue. That's the data we want because, because that's the data that you are purporting <laughs> to be representative of something in Montgomery County. So, so and, and, and that's what I mean by, um, by um, the need for um, the one-on-one the -on -one dialogue with the with the police, um, you know, we we can sit around and you know chit and chat about you know which data set it is, but um, but but the where the rubber hits the road is what what data are they using to make policy to create programs to send forward to whatever federal and state folk they have to report to. That's the data that they are using for their own purposes. And so regardless of how faulty it may be, regardless of how, um, how antiquated their system may be, that's the data 
that they have said to others that they have trust in. And because that's the data they have trust in, that's the data that we need to see. Exactly. Nadia, you had your hand up. Yeah. I want to remind everyone as well that there was a memorandum of agreement between MCPD and the DOJ about traffic data stops from 2010. We are not asking something Same different. concerns, exactly. We're not asking for something new. Um, I will say that, um, first of all, uh, Carlos and, and Susan, thank you so much. I know you all do a whole lot of work for us. We have a lot of requests consistently. Um, and I'm sorry that this kind of had to happen because you know I don't I don't want y'all to feel like we're pointing fingers or anything like that whatsoever. I know you all work with us um, consistently to make sure we get the answers that we need. Your community members yourself, so you're part of the the group that's going to be affected by these decisions. But uh, piggybacking on what Ms. Branson said is, what, then what are you using to make these policies? Um, what are the answers that you're getting and where are you getting this information? Uh, because it seems like we continue, continuously paint Montgomery County a certain way, uh, but where's the data then? Um, and Robin has been saying this for a really long time. Uh, and so sometimes we get an answer of there is data and there's a lot of data. And then sometimes it's, oh, well, the data's not right and we don't know where it's at. So what, which one is it? So what we're trying to figure out is transparent answers. This is not new. Per the memorandum of agreement with the Department, Federal Department of Justice, this should have been happening since 2010. Granted, I know it takes a while to move systems from one place to another, do X, Y, and Z. However, we were we agreed with the Department of Justice to do this. So I don't know what the consequences are. I don't know where it goes from there. Uh, but this is not new. We're not asking for something that they don't know should already be there. So. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Agreed. Alicia, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say very briefly, um, if we're talking about data and the, the various sources that we have read and reviewed, the OLO, Office of Legislative Oversight, mm -hmm. Reimagining Public Safety um, Task Force, which was commissioned by the county executive, um, Equal Law Enforcement for All, they've all produce the same numbers for us. They've given us that information in our faces that there is great discrepancy, um, racial discrepancy in the number of black and brown persons that are stopped uh, in tra traffic um, versus white counterparts, use of excessive force and in deaths and fatalities. All of that information was in those three sources. It's in there. So, I mean, to, we don't need to get all that quantitatively meticulous. This is not an empirical scientific study. You know, that we've, we've had several sources that we've actually read and reviewed. Hopefully everybody read and reviewed the copious amount of information that we've been given. Um, but they've all said the same thing. So I, you know, I just don't understand what, um, you know, I, I think Dalvin and Nadia, um, I think that you know we we have all landed on the same conclusion that you and all giving you and Nadia giving a PSA or a, a TV spot, radio spot or whatever, and doing the press release, following whatever other steps you feel like should be taken this week. Um, and I also have to say I think that there should be um, there should be there should be some kind of follow up for people who don't show up for PAC meetings. It's only two damn meetings a month, people. Oh my God. Like for an hour about something that was very, very, is very important. I mean, that's the reason I'm here. I'm giving up my time, just like Vernon is, just like Nadia is, just like uh, Sergeant Brewer is, like Sherry is. I mean, we're, be here at the meetings. And, and how is Robin going to pre present something? And he's not even here. That's infuriating. I hear you. I I I think <laughs> I hear you. I hear you and I share your frustration. Um, okay, so we have five minutes left. Okay. So I raised the motion and Alicia, you said you were you you said you would well, I noticed that Kate Brewer has her hand up and oh I, I, I Sergeant, sorry, Brewer. Sorry, Sergeant Brewer, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't see the little yellow hand up on your on your name. I'm sorry about that. No, it's all right. Techni technically, if there's a motion on the floor, you go ahead and vote on the motion. My, mine is minuscule. Go ahead, you sure? 
Yeah, no, technically, if there's a motion on the floor, absolutely. Okay, okay, so- Do we uh, have a quorum? Do we even have a quorum? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have se seven commissioners. Okay. Yeah, so we have set, we have more than 50%. <laughs> um, we are not going to vote on Robin's thing right now. We're not going to do that. What we are going to vote on, the motion that I've raised, is to for Carlos and Susan to please send the data request to MCPD, okay? Carlos and Susan, I'm going to ask that you send it as it was, as it was written, okay? That is my motion. My motion is to send the data request as it was written to MCPD and give MCPD a week. So they will have until August 30th to respond to that data request, okay? That's my, that's my motion. Alicia seconded it. Uh, so can we vote in the chat? We just need a, like all of us to say A. So can everybody vote in the chat, please? I, uh, because I'm not accessing yeah, chat. I got you, I got you, Shabab. I got you, I got you. We have five eyes, Carlos. Who are we missing? Yes. Oh, Mr. Rick. Five eyes. Well, majority has it, right? Yeah, majority has it. Okay. All right. So we have five A's, one one and one abstention for Sergeant Brewer. Uh, Mr. Ricks, if you can vote in the chat so we can count your vote, that would be good. I did vote no. Oh, I don't I see I it. Put it in. All right, so we have five A's, one nay, and one abstention. So the motion passes. So Carlos and Susan, you guys will send the data request to MCPD tomorrow um, and give MCPD seven days to respond to the data request. You'll send it as written. Um, and the second part, this is before I let everybody, this is before I let everybody go. Um, so we sent a letter about the the about the the shooting of the young man in the McDonald's drive-through. Um, the, the state's attorney, Carlos, if I'm not mistaken, responded, but Chief Jones had said that he would respond a couple of days after that. It has now been longer than a couple of days. <laughs> so, uh, so I am going to propose another motion that we release a press, uh, uh, similar to what Ms. Branson suggested pertaining to this, to, to publicly ask for Chief Jones to answer the questions that we asked him, okay? Because he did not answer any of the ones that we asked in the, in, in, in the letter. He didn't answer any of them. And he said he was going to, okay? So that is my motion. Uh, do I have a second for a motion to release a press release asking Chief Jones publicly to answer our questions from that letter? I second it. I have a second from Ms. Branson. Okay, so please vote, vote in the chat and if this passes, I'm sorry, I'm trying to fix Dalvin. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry to hold up the process. What are we voting on in this this particular oh, this point is to, right to now? Release, to release a pre, uh, a press the statement, unedited. Uh, the uh, uh, yes, asking asking for Chief Jones, asking Chief Jones publicly to answer the questions that we outlined in the statement that we released regarding regarding the, the unedited footage request. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Aye. Thank you, Nadia. All right, the eyes have it again. Mr. Ricks, do we have an abstention or a nay from you this time? Can't hear it. You're on mute. You're on mute, Mr. Ricks. Still on mute. There you go. Abstain from the vote. You abstain from the, okay. So we have five A's, two abstentions. So that motion passes as well. So Nadia and I will draw something up and send it and send it to Carlos. Carlos, will, Carlos, this is one of those times where we don't wait until Friday, right? Like we, we talked about. So yeah. I will get, uh, Nadia and I will get that to you by tomorrow, close of business. So you can send it to the PAC tomorrow. And our suggestion is gonna be for the PAC to respond to us within 48 hours with any edits. So that way we can release it before the end of the week, okay? Um, and this is this is one of those moments where we, it, I I think Ms. Branson nailed it on the head. We we asked for some information, did not get any, and we have to turn the pressure up a little bit. Okay. 
Is what anybody... about the racial equity toolkit? We're not yes. going to talk about yes. that at all. So, okay. so we we were going to review the racial equity toolkit. We are not going to do that tonight because I I I stick to these times, folks. We I'm letting you out at seven thirty. Okay. Um, what we are going to do is so the hope is that we are going to meet with Chief Jones in September, right? Uh, the person who was going to work with us on the racial and equity toolkit is no longer with the county. So we're going to put a pause on that for right now with the hope being that with our second meeting in September, somebody from the county will be able to come with us and speak to us about that, okay? And can I request that the yes. civilian chief um, attend as well as yes. Chief Jones? If yep, not a that problem. That would be great. Not a problem. Um, I'm not going to hold anybody longer because I know you want to get off the album, but do you mind if I just say two things real quick about that? And again, hey, very you're, quick, there's, you're a you're about, sorry, yeah, go there's a mention about the centralization of the motor unit and when that occurred and if that was going to occur, that did occur in the beginning of July. And that's mentioned in um, of the questions of everything that's there. So we have a centralized traffic unit now as of the first pay period of July. So that might help with um, either clearing up, I know you guys are talking about maybe minimizing some of the things that are in here that can be removed um, as that information, with that information, potentially, however you guys wanna handle that. Um, and also, I just have concerns about where he got the costs of traffic stops. I think that information is just a little too faulty to really kind of put numbers on it like that without um, more information that assumes that every single officer makes traffic stops all the time and you've got detectives that just aren't doing that. So um, I think that, I, I just think that that is, misleading potentially but that that's all i have but thank you guys so and that that to that last point sergeant brewer if you and actually i'll i was gonna say if, if if that information is faulty if you can point us to who would have the correct information that would be that i think would be helpful because we don't want to cite faulty information so I, if you but can, if, I, I just don't think that there's a way to quantify the, the 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 amount of a traffic stop which is what he's trying to do what a traffic stop costs the county. I just don't think there's a way to do that. Okay. So I don't know that there's a way to get that information. Okay. Ms. Branson, you have your hand up. I see you want to say yeah. something. Um, two things. First, as I read the question about the itemization of costs of the traffic stops, it was posed sort of like this. If yada yada then this and that okay so it, it wasn't saying as a certainty that this is how much each traffic stop costs it was posed as a hypothetical with the underlying issue being that there is a cost benefit analysis that that should be occurring um and if and and the cost is not just to the civilian who happens to be stopped and you know what their time is and you know the ticket and all that but there's a cost to the department and therefore to the taxpayers of Montgomery County if the police department believes that there's another way to calculate that cost benefit analysis um, I, I think it would be more than appropriate for them to propose that. Um, but, but we can't, um, we can only know what we know. We can't know what they won't tell us. Okay. So, so, you know, that's the way I see that question. The, the second thing I wanted to bring up um, it's probably new business and maybe it can hold for, you know, the next time to be put on the agenda. But, you know, as I think I emailed with you, Dalvin, about the county executive having this group now going to be looking at policies and procedures or something um, and, and will have no interaction with, with this commission. I, I really think, again, and <laughs> that's, that's something that has to be um, questioned. Um, and, and I think we need to ask the county executive, you know, what it is, um, what, what's the purpose here? You know, because we just simply can't have, you know, um, you know, 
all these different people doing all these different things and none of them interact and none of them connect and and there is no you know there's you know um I think Einstein said, never confuse motion with progress. Okay, so I'm looking at a whole lot of motion, um, but I'm not looking at a whole lot of progress. And, you know, and I really think, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I really think everybody needs to be accountable to the extent that they are impeding progress. And that includes account executive. So, so, um, so, so that's my, you know, that, that's my little pee for today. That I agree with you 100%, Cheree. I oh, Lord, I must have said something wrong. If Vernon agrees with me. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> there's too many, there's too many uh, hands in the pie. That yeah. There's the council having stuff going. The executive got stuff going. The state got stuff going. And, 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 and we asking for information that nobody knows. And, it's, and it's just too many things going on. I and, think and we have to assert ourselves. I mean, we we cannot, you know, what what the state does is, you know, totally within their bailiwick. What you know, what the council does is within their bailiwick. But at some point, I think we have to assert ourselves and say, "Hey, look, y'all, this is getting kind of out of hand." You know, um, and, and who can we say that to? You know, I mean, the council and its defense has asked us to weigh in on things they are considering. I think that brings us into the mix in an important way. But, you know, the executive is just, you know, we're, we're not asked to weigh in. We're not, I mean, that we have to know um, for our work, how this consultant group's actions impact what we're supposed to be doing. You know, it's, it's a question of, of county resources, uh, human resources, um, as, as well as fiscal resources. So, so, you know, I really think we should ask, you know, the county executive about that. Like, you know, what's up, dude? Why, you know, how, how are these people, you know, and, and that goes to the audit that we, we still have not seen. I have no idea what that's supposed to bring about. I mean, so, so there are, you know, there are, I, I think it would be helpful to get some clarification from the county executive about what he believes his, you know, his uh, consultants um, are, are how they should be interacting with us, how, how the information they compile, the reports, whatever, whether they should come to us. You know, we shouldn't just read about this in the newspaper. That's, that's not okay. It's really not. No. Thank you for that, Ms. Branson. Um, and that's something that Nadia and I, after you shared, after you sent me your email, I touched base with Nadia and it's something we're gonna we're gonna talk to Carlos and Susan about this week for sure. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate both the feedback provided around the frustrations that you that you guys are feeling, but also just this work. And we know this work is not gonna be easy, but I think to Ms. Branson's point, I think that this is, there's, enough is enough i think right <laughs> enough is enough like we, we need to start we need to start lighting some fires i think um have a wonderful wonderful rest of your monday night guys and i will see you guys for september's meeting okay have a good one dalvin do you yep. need to go through them can can can't you and nadia contact the executive yourselves or no on behalf of pac we I don't it's more likely that we get a response if we go through Carlos and Susan. Right. I don't think he recognizes or even knows. That's what I was exactly. a little bit worried about. I was a little bit, yeah. 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 They, That's they, a shame. They, it's more of a chance that we get a response. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Response. Yeah. All right. Okay. Have a good evening. All right. Bye.